Hi everybody, it's Robbie from Southern California and I'm going to do a walkthrough on the workings of my rainbow garden and what's going on today. My strawberries are doing good. I don't think I've done that video yet, so we'll talk about that later. I've got garlic growing in a bucket here. I've got potato mint coming up everywhere. Look at this. I've got to separate some. I'm going to put some in there because I had six plants in there and they're going to spread and it's too many. It was six little potato mints and really you only need one in there. I put one plant last year and the whole thing took over. We'll get more into what that is, but it's a mint that throws a tuber that you eat and it tastes like potatoes. The only difference is you can eat it raw or you could cook it. Then this is a setup I'm going to use in here when I get to this. So we're not going to talk about anything here because nothing's done yet. I'm almost there. I'm almost there, but I've got a lot I'm going to do here. So that is going to be part of that setup. As far as here, it's all going great. Look at the strawberries that are coming up now. Isn't that amazing? So this is doing really good. This is the one that turns. I've got the video on how easy it is to make like a lazy Susan strawberry tower. And this has been fantastic. I'd like to make some more. That's a toad on the bottom. There's holes in it. The chair is actually sitting in there because it's metal. It will be fine. And I've got a whole bunch of hybrid zucchini plants or squash plants growing. I don't really care right now, but I threw them in there to test the seeds. They started growing so I knew I could really get going in my garden. Here I've got two zucchini and they are starting to take off. Look, we've got the start of flowers. Now two really are kind of too much for this but we'll see what happens and I've talked about this in another video. The mustard plants, you got something? There's two mustards in there. They don't do good with zucchini. There is a tomato plant back here. I'm gonna leave it. What's probably gonna happen with that tomato plant is it's not gonna grow that big. It's just gonna stay there. It's gonna set root and just wait. And then as soon as the squash are done later on in the year, that plant will probably just take over. I've had that happen before. So it's just gonna wait. It's gonna wait for its turn. And I've got some, let's see, what do I have in here? Regular, oh, these are walking onions. How do I know? Because I labeled it. And there is a sprouting broccoli from an old seed I had and it's still not growing. I don't know, maybe the seeds are weak. I'm not sure, I've tried them before and they didn't really grow. They kind of got to a little size and stopped. This is a San Marzano tomato. I took it out of my chair garden. So I trimmed it back, see there, there's the plant. And it's actually doing okay. We'll see what happens. I really like those tomatoes. So we'll, I'm hoping it will take off. That's a broccoli back here. And I've actually picked the broccoli head and I've been giving it to Kitty. It was a fairly good head already. And then these are just a bunch of cuttings in here. I've got my roses. I've got some hibiscus. So that's all that's going on here. And it's kind of double duty. What I like to do is as I'm growing things in my containers, I can just stick some cuttings in there and forget about it. And if it makes it, I've got something. So, you know, it's like, I don't have to do any work. Just the only work I did was cutting it and sticking it in. Here is another true zucchini, the Black Beauty. And see how much bigger that one is, the plant-wise? If you look at the plant, this was planted after that one. So when you put two plants in, because they're pulling from each other, and they might not grow as fast or as big, but you know what? I've done it and I've gotten a ton of zucchini. So I'm going to leave those two and leave this one. Layering is good because it gives it a whole different root system for itself. In other words, this is really not interfering with that. Even though there's a lot of holes in there and the broccoli or the zucchini could use the container, it still kind of makes it independent and it works well. So this, and plus there'll always be dampness under there and that's what's really, really good. So here I've got some beets and why do I know? Because I labeled it. So I've got beets in there and here's the cutting of the papaya. I did the video on it. It's actually looking quite well. The leaves came off, but you know, it's still very green. So I'm hoping it's going to make it. And then in here, I've got a tomato in here, another broccoli. I've layered some lettuce in here and some garlic in a bucket. Again, this is so it retains moisture underneath. So when I'm not watering it, I know that for sure there's some sort of dampness there. And that's just a whole bunch of Korean melon seeds. I tossed them in there to see if they were any good because I had a whole bag, like a thousand plus in there. Guess what? They're good. Gary's going to remove some and move some to his garden because I really don't want them. That's the sugar cane. 
I think I did the video on that. Sugar cane. Oh yeah, I got to get that out of there. So that's got to go. Let's see. Here is another Black Beauty. I've got one. This one just came up recently. So we'll see how this goes. This is a weed. Okay, leaving that. That's just a cutting of a dinosaur kale. And this is a black cobra. I can uncover it. It came from the wall. It grew from seed. And we'll see what happens. So it's got its own pot. Onions from Texas. Just plain old white onions. I think it was a mix of onions. So they're doing really, really well. So that's what's going on in there. Oh, you can't even see my tag anymore, but... I can still see it says onions. Then this is the mustard. See how big the mustard gets when it's not with zucchini? Isn't that amazing? So I've got a mustard in here. There's two of them in here and Gary's been pulling the leaves and eating them. He grabs a big, big leaf. It's like an elephant ear. He loves it and he eats it. Is it any good? It's, it's nice when you first bite into it. And then once it's in your mouth for a while, that's when the hate kicks in. And then I've got a little bit of Chinese cabbage and they're doing pretty good. There were four little plants in there. Then here I've got the rose cutting that I've done. I've got another zucchini. I See, I labeled this. I had three Black Beauty zucchinis that didn't grow, the seeds. So I stuck them in here and this one came up and this one came up. I probably will move one of them. And then I believe, not labeled, so these must be walking onions. So I've got some onions around here. You know, they don't look like walking onions. Well, because, you know, there might be some extra onions that I didn't label. Let me see if I label. Uh-oh. Okay, I'm not sure. I'm pretty sure they're walking onions, but we'll see what happens when the top's open. And there's that. And then look at these mustards. Look at this. Again, no zucchini in here, and the mustard is doing fantastic. My lettuce has gone to seed, but this is such a gorgeous plant. As soon as the bees come and do their thing, I'm going to start covering it. I don't want the birds to eat it. I want to collect the seeds. There's a broccoli plant here. There's another lettuce getting ready to go to seed. Back here, really cool, is a black cobra cutting. And it's starting to grow. So the cutting took some of those little plants are more Korean seeds that got in there. Walking onions in, it were in here, baby walking onions. And then I've got, let's see if we can get back here. This is a cutting from a tomato and I did label it. I know what it is. It came off my driveway. They grow a lot of tomatoes all winter. They grow all year. So I put a cutting in here. Let's see what else is in here. And lettuce, and again, these are Korean melons. Oh, there is asparagus. This is the asparagus plant. That it's a purple passion, but from seed. So I don't know if it's going to be true purple or what it's going to grow, you know, like. But the point is, it came off my deck. So I stuck it in here. And I want to see if, if I can get asparagus growing in here. Gary's got gorgeous purple asparagus growing. Oh my gosh, that has been wonderful. Just real quick on the bottom, I have nothing. It's just catching the water mixing in some regular plain water with it and rewatering the plants with it. And the plants obviously love it. I looked back, let me see back here. Let's step back out of the sun. I looked back at my chair garden I did last year and nowhere were any of them this big at this time of the year still in April. So this is doing really, really well by being rewatered with all this water coming up because all the water coming out of these containers, the way I make my soil, it's compost tea. And being that it might be so strong, I like mixing water in. I don't always, but I really do like mixing water into it and then feeding all these plants. And oh, over here, this is all garlic. And then my blueberries I, from the front yard that were not growing are doing pretty good here. We don't have the sun yet on the fig tree, so my water feature is not growing here yet. And this, so that's what's going on there. And then the last one over here. This is just a lettuce growing in here. Again, it's going to seed. I'm going to collect a lot of the seed and it's the easiest thing in the world to grow. This is, I had some Black Beauty seeds also that weren't growing, I think. Yep, they weren't sprouting. One came up. This is a little broccoli. And then this is the sun gold, see? So I want to separate those and get those somewhere and hopefully they'll grow orange tomatoes. These were another one. This was another one I squeezed in here. This is what happens when you take a tomato and you either push it in the ground or squeeze it. And you end up with all these. But I'll show you in another video how easy it is to separate and put them in your own cups and then move them anywhere you want. Of course, nobody's got a place to put 
50 tomatoes. So we'll see what happens with that. Oh, and here is the zucchini. These are the two zucchinis. I've got them marked. And then this is just a stick from a mushroom plant that I'm trying to root. It actually did already root. It lost its leaves, but then so did my big one right now. So it'll probably come back pretty soon. And that's it. What else? Let's see. Let's swing around real quick. I'm almost done with my pizza garden. And then as you can see, I've got the whole mess here because I'm really, really working. So you'll see how this was built. This has been fantastic. Look, this thing is solid as a rock. I love this. This is a vertical garden. I'm gonna explain why I did it like that. And it's gonna be fantastic. I hope to get to that today and get that planted and take you with me doing that. Because I call it a pizza garden because it's going to have all the herbs and everything I use in the pizza that I make here. My homemade pizza. So I'm just calling it a pizza garden. I kind of went with the orange and yellow and red thing. of tomato sauce and cheeses and, you know, things like that. So I kind of went in that direction. But that's it. Kind of an update. It's coming along. I hope to get all this done soon. Been working on projects of making bowls for water features. And overall, I am very, very happy with how it's coming along and it's kind of a nice place just to sit and then of course I haven't done the wall yet but you'll see that on the garden tour I'm working on it slowly I've got a lot of stuff going on but this has been really such a dream to be able to sit out here and I'm hoping to have coffee time with you guys in the summer where I can just sit and chit chat in the morning and see what's going on with you and see what's going on with me and it's just such a nice place to sit it's quiet. I've got all the birds here. I've got bush tits that have got a nest up there. I've got goldfinches with nests. I've got a cooper hawk that's raising babies up there. We've got hummingbird nests everywhere all around the property, on the house, on the property. It's amazing. Birds are nesting everywhere. Gary just told me the mockingbirds laid an egg this morning. So it's been a lot of fun. You probably can't see, but there's goldfinches down there. They've been collecting seeds off the south thistle and what they also have been doing is the bush tits were working with the goldfinches collecting insects so they can happily feed on the same plant side by side because each one is eating something different no competition the goldfinch doesn't want the insects and the bush tits do so with that I think, you know, that's it for today I just wanted to kind of do an update and real quick I'll show you the bush tits which is fascinating they're little tiny gray birds and the females got that white eye it's so light it almost looks very aggressive looking and the males got that beautiful dark eye and it's just they're so cute they're so tiny and they chitter chatter and they move so fast it is always so so hard to get a video of them so with that i hope you enjoyed this get your gardens going as soon as your weather's good here we've been fortunate enough of course i could get hit with a freeze I've seen it happen once in May years and years ago, and if it does, well, compost whatever doesn't make it and keep going. With that, have a wonderful, wonderful day, and don't forget to eat what you grow. Bye-bye, everybody. <sighs> so colorful. It really does bring a smile to your face, especially as the cabbage moth is going around, cabbage butterfly laying its wonderful little eggs in there so they can eat up my plants. Ah, oh, but I got you. My bush tits will come in and finish you guys.